So there we have amazing large size flexible display. Hi, Howdy. please introduce yourself. I'm John Jacobs, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Samsung Display. This is our Flex Hybrid. As you can see, it slides. Oh wow. And it also folds. Slides and folds. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. This is the future. This is We certainly I hope just so. saw I just saw the future. So what what do you turn it from what kind of size to what kind of size? Well, that kind of depends on the customer. So this model goes from a 10 inch to a 12.4. Well, huge, cool. And right here, at, and here is also, this is gonna potentially be a big, big market for something that goes from a little laptop size to a huge desktop display, kind yeah. of. So kind of your, your yep. uh, traditional kind of clamshell notebook. And you could have a virtual keyboard down here. You could have a very large tablet. Or if you think about maybe with a kickstand, it could be almost like an all-in-one PC. Oh, wow. this is awesome. And of course, like a laptop, it folds very close. And you could have a physical keyboard somehow externally that kind of I'm sure I'm sure there's Bluetooth plugs keyboards. In, all kinds of yeah, ways. I'm sure a Bluetooth keyboard, something like that, you know, yeah. would work just fine. All right. This is a rollable. Yeah. So this is a rollable technology. Woo. That's like a, so such a cool. Like a roll of, of towels. So again, advanced prototype. What um, would be the market, maybe? Do you have some ideas? I'm not an industrial designer. Yeah? Um, but this so is a tool for all these guys who make the designs. So one of the reasons for prototypes is to inspire the creativity in current and future customers. We can manufacture and design great displays. It's up to them to decide what type of product that might go into. Nice. That's awesome. All right, you designers and architects out there, figure out all kinds of cool ways to use them. Exactly. These are, I was uh, taking Uber on the way here, and the guy said it was on a third flexible. So this <laughs> is some not third. This is, uh, so we call this our flex in and out. So I'm sure you're probably familiar with most foldable phones fold in like that. Yep. Okay? Most foldable yep. phones look like this. This one also folds Whoa. in both directions. How is it possible? It's, it's somehow flexible on the crease. How is it possible? It's... We've got the best engineers in the business. That's how it's possible. Whoa. That's awesome. That's a really cool mechanical uh, creation right there. Yep. So and it's... Is it the same one that's next to it? Yeah, same one. One's just showing the folding one way, that's folding the other direction. All right. Um, this is what we call our slidable flex solo. It goes from 13 inch up to 17.3. Um, that's on a mechanical slider, so it'll see how it closes cool. by itself. How would you say is uh, the quality of a display when it has these kinds of functions and when it's just a fixed? Potentially, it could be the same. Everything could be the same in terms of uh, well, uh, colors, we're uh, shipping, brightness. We're shipping foldable phones in millions of units per year at present, so um, we wouldn't ship that unless we can meet our customers' technical requirements. Nice. That's awesome. Um, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of, it feels like magic to look well, at it. You think about it, you know, a 14 inch display used to always be a 14 inch display. In this case, it's not. So it's how do you get more screen real estate in the same size package? And that's what you can do with something like that, a slideable display. Nice. Here we have 240 hertz. So. If you're a gamer, if you watch a lot of video, response time is a critical factor. So we are already commercially shipping a 240 hertz display in a laptop product today. Um, this is just trying to show you the difference between 120 hertz OLED and 240 hertz OLED in terms of the smoothness of the image going across the screen, whether you're gaming or reading text or watching a movie or something like that. So you have that kind of improvement. So I need to upgrade to a 240 hertz camera so I can capture this because it looks amazing. <laughs> This is what we call our sensor OLED display. So what we do is we integrate sensors 
into the display itself. So fingerprint, heart rate, something like that. Into the display, but when people have behind display fingerprint right now, this is different? This is different. Yeah. So this is like the whole display kind of yeah. becomes... Not the whole display, parts of the display. Parts of the display. It depends on how, again, where the customer wants those features designed into the display. Nice. And this last one here, I don't know if your camera will capture this, this is what we call a light field display. Wow. So you kind of see it kind of looks 3D, depending on the angle you're at. Nice. So it, it sends one image to each eye, mm -hmm. and uh, from different angles, yeah. you get different, right? So it's switchable between 2D and 3D. Nice. All right. So that's awesome. So at, um, at Samsung Display, you're pretty much making the best mobile displays in the world. I wouldn't have taken the job working for them if I didn't believe that. It's pretty, pretty amazing that... Uh, uh, how about here, the Display Week? They're the inventors of OLED. There are like a lot of people who worked on OLED for many decades. Absolutely. And it, it must be one of the coolest things for them to come here and look what's the latest. That's part of it. I mean, uh, Display Week is uh, it's also an academic function. The Society for Information Display for 60 years now, I think, um, if you walk around some of the halls, there's a lot of technical presentations, so a lot of just brilliant, brilliant engineers are presenting their latest research on anything and everything related to the display industry. You know, materials, light management, optical films, the silicon that drives the displays, you name it, there's technical papers going on all week. So nice. think of it as kind of like a, a once a year university for <laughs> yeah. everybody involved in the display industry to kind of catch up on the latest and greatest tech and, and also what people are working on for the future. What's happening here with the OLED or not? So people scan their phones and somehow it shows if it's an OLED? It'll, it'll tell you who's OLED. You can have all the different uh, brands and if you, then it'll tell you if it, that's... Uh, it should tell you whether it's a Samsung OLED or not. Yeah. All right. Okay, I just need to click on this and boom. Oh no, not that one. Okay, so other models. Yeah. So many, many brands are using them. Yeah. So we're OLED display in terms of volume. Can you say a little bit about what goes into a factory that does this? It's like a, it's completely different than the TVs, right? Yeah, it's a different it's a different underlying technology. It's both based on OLED, but it's different underlying technology in terms of how it's structured. Um, in terms of the factories, uh, factories an OLED factory is a multi-billion-dollar investment. Um, it takes anywhere from 18 to as many as 36 months to go from, you know, greenfield to mass production out, depending on what you're doing. Nice. And we've, we're planning for our next generation, we call it a Gen 8.7 OLED fab. Um, it was talked about uh, in other places. Uh, that'll be doing this type of stuff and, and hopefully a bit more uh, in the future. So that's And a, it's been anticipated for many years. There was always these curved edges and mm -hmm. it was always felt like behind this hard shell, there was something that could be flexible. And now it's the last two or three years. Yeah, it's so it's just going crazy. Yeah, it's 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 progressing very rapidly. Um, you know, people who are outside of the industry may not know how many years and even decades of research and development go into this sort of thing. But there is a tremendous amount of R and D effort by a lot, a lot of people, a lot of companies to make this a reality. I mean. An OLED display, you've got our R&D, you've got sub-component suppliers, you've got a lot of companies involved in making these products a reality. There's a whole supply chain of uh, partners maybe also. You don't do everything, right? We don't do everything. We do a lot. You do a lot. And then, um, yeah. so the touch has to work perfectly, the whole, uh, yeah. everything. Yeah, if you think about putting something like this into a smartphone, into a laptop, into a car. Um, the requirements from those customers can be quite severe. And you don't want those products coming back, you know, you want them to last a long time, you know. And one of the things we've done at Samsung, we don't have it here, um, we call it our Eco Squared OLED. We've made our OLED far more efficient so it uses less energy. And we also eliminated a layer of plastic. So most displays have what's called a polarizer piece of plastic that helps scatter the light. 
what we've done in our next generation mobile technology is we've eliminated that polarizer. So we've gotten rid of a layer of plastic and we've made the display far more efficient in terms of power consumption. Less power means less energy in. Nice. That's awesome. And uh, uh, it's, it's so nice to, I mean, to be supplying to 8 billion people. Everybody wants these displays. I, cer I, I certainly hope so. That would make my job a lot easier. I, I'm hoping these displays become affordable for everybody. You know, like some of the foldable phones are still a bit expensive, but hopefully with well, the volume, any there's a way to get yeah. it lower. Any new technology, whether it's the automobile, microwave ovens, color TVs, you know, you have to start somewhere. Um, and sometimes, you know, the latest and greatest, most advanced technology, like I said, you've got decades of R&D, which means hundreds of thousands of hours, massive investments, and, you know, you have to make it economically viable. Because if it wasn't economically viable, people wouldn't do this. Sometimes yeah. I, I get a feeling that guys like me, they're like waiting for, when is it coming, the next thing? And, uh, well, well, you're doing all the work and <laughs> making it happen. Well, I guess that some engineers are like, working, I mean, it's years and years of work mm -hmm. and for many engineers, and there's, and somehow they have to... And there's a lot of, te there's a lot of te companies that I've seen here, I've been coming to the show for 20 years, and there's some technologies that are in R&D that never quite make it to commercialization. There's, you know, there's economic factors, there's all kinds of factors. Um, at Samsung, we've been very successful because we've got an incredible leadership team, we've got incredible engineering talent, and we've got phenomenal partners from up and down the supply chain that have made us all successful. So it's, it's not just, uh, you know, it's a big, big group effort, and at Samsung, we're very proud of all of our partners and customers. Nice, and uh, uh, tomorrow, hopefully, I can find one of your partners, uh, colleagues, who, who can talk to about this stuff yeah, here, because this has been a big news the last two, three years. Yes. Uh, Samsung is going full in on the TV, too. And I just wonder, how does it, like the connection, the mobile and uh, that kind of display? Um, well, they're both based on OLED, but they're slightly different. What I can tell you about QD OLED is it uses, so the mobile stuff is what we call, uses red, green, and blue OLED pixels. The quantum dot OLED uses all blue OLED material, but it uses red, green, and blue quantum dot material with the OLED to get that amazing color saturation and color volume that you see. It's amazing. Yeah, so that's, it's, they're very closely related, but they're also different. But yeah, talk to my colleague, he is, forgotten more about QD OLED than I will ever know. Um, Shirag will probably be here, uh, I'm sure, tomorrow. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Can I send you some money? I would use WISE if I had to send you some money. I will not send you some money. I'm pretty sure I will not do that. But if I did, I would use WISE. It's really amazing. You can send money all over the world, 150 countries. You can send money to India. You can send money to the US. You can send money to Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea, everywhere. And then you get a local bank account. It's crazy. You get a bank account in the US and Europe. It's really amazing. And the fees are five to 10 times cheaper than your bank. So use it as a prepaid debit card. Buy a bunch of stuff on the internet. Save some money when you buy stuff in different currencies. Check my video where I explain a bunch of more stuff. Why this is a smart way. And use my link so I can make some money. <laughs>